Okay, so this is the name of the lecture, The Cause and Cure of Heart Disease. And I'm a chiropractor and I'm saying this. And this is a big deal and I've never said this before. And this is going to go on YouTube and people are going to freak out because I'm saying this. All right, so let's just get into this. All right, so I'm going to give you this analogy. Here's a woman um, using spackle. Let me see if I can take this thing off. There we go. Using spackle to uh, fill holes in a wall, and the spackle is the correct substance to use when filling holes in a wall. And that's what it looks like. And this is what toothpaste looks like. And you can use toothpaste to fill holes in a wall. Has anybody done this before? Yeah, maybe if you ran out of apartments. It, you ran out of apartments. So. Yeah. Yeah. So the point is, the point is, Toothpaste does not belong in the wall, right? Yeah. But you're supposed to use spackle. Right, you're supposed to use to brush your teeth, right, exactly. Okay, so just keep that in mind. It'll come up later. All right, now we're going to talk about how arteries get clogged. Here's a normal artery. This is a drawing, obviously. It's not a, you know, a picture. And the point here is that arteries have different layers. It's muscular, and there's an inside lining. Okay, simple enough, right? So here's the beginning of heart disease. There's a tear. Raise your hand if you knew this already, that there's a tear that starts the process of clogged arteries. Yeah, they don't talk about this on TV. Medical doctors don't talk about this. When you watch 2020 or 60 Minutes, they don't talk about this tear in the arteries. This is the problem. This is the start of heart disease. Don't forget the tear. This is, <laughs> this is the beginning of heart disease. Okay? All right, now you got it. You got it? Okay, good. Okay, now if the arteries are, have little tears in them, then there's little tiny bleeds that occur underneath the skin. So the little tiny blotches from little tiny tears in the arteries. Got that? Has anybody ever seen this before on somebody, like in real life? Yeah? Anybody else? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <coughs> Here's another example. This is more uh, pronounced like right there and there. But I've seen this many times. I've seen heart disease patients where they, they, they pull up their pant, you know, their long pants like this, and then they, and this is what shows up. So I've seen this quite a number of times. Here's another picture of uh, bleed in the teeth. <clears throat> okay. Now it's kind of below, it's, it's still within the tissue. It just kind of shows up kind of like as a dark bruise and some swelling. Um, and let me backtrack a little bit. Notice the swelling here, too, in the ankles, all right, which is a sign of uh, when somebody has heart attack, a heart attack, their ankles swell up, or they have congestive heart failure, their ankles swell up, okay? So this is heart disease, right? I got one more picture. Here's a hand with these bruises. You've seen that before, right? Okay, so heart disease, all right. So actually, these four pictures I just showed you, I tricked you. This is actually scurvy. All four of these pictures I pulled from the internet are pictures of straight up, straight up scurvy. Okay, so what is scurvy? Vitamin C deficiency. Yeah, scurvy is vitamin C defi deficiency. And what happens when you don't have enough vitamin C? The arteries break open and they tear. So here's a book called Limeys. This is why sailors were called Limeys because they ate limes to prevent scurvy. And they didn't eat oranges because oranges didn't last on the ship as long as limes did. But Ebbett Mitchell, a woman from 1707, was the first person to discover that vitamin C prevents scurvy. Now, in the, in the textbooks of history, it's actually a man from 1750. But forget that, it's actually this woman. And back then, it was actually a recipe that included citrus, and eye of newt and tail of lizard. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it was this strange concoction of stuff, but it actually the, the citrus that did it. All right, <clears throat> moving on. So now you got this tear, and then, the, then this plaque forms where the tear occurred. Okay, now what is the plaque? The plaque is cholesterol. Yes. Cholesterol. <laughs> the, the cl yes. yes, cholesterol is toothpaste in the wall of your apartment, your cheap apartment, that you're trying to paint real fast. Mm -hmm. Cholesterol does not belong here. 
okay? But, the, but, but it ends up there because of the tear. It just ends up there. It just like gets stuck in there. That's what happens. Does that make sense? Okay, so cholesterol is a temporary patch to repair the tear that is not being repaired because of a, of a deficiency of vitamin C. You got that? Now there's more to it, so just follow along here with me. All right, they're a temporary patch for tears in the arteries, cholesterol. All right, now let's talk about repairing arteries. Real vitamin C repairs tears in the arteries. That would be like spackle, that's why I have this picture of spackle. It's the correct thing to do. <clears throat> real vitamin C comes from citrus. So real vitamin C is different than the vitamin C that you find at the health food store. The government says that vitamin C is ascorbic acid. Do you know this? When you read the label of vitamin C, it says ascorbic acid, 500 milligrams. Okay, but real vitamin C is a big molecule with many things in it, <clears throat> including this says tyr tyrosinase organic copper, bioflavonoid complexes, ascorbogen, P, J, and K factors. There's a bunch of stuff in vitamin C. It's a big thing. Here's another illustration from another author. <clears throat> it's the same, same words and stuff. But notice the ascorbic acid is actually this protective outer layer. So ascorbic acid is an antioxidant. That's all it is, antioxidant. It's, it's against oxygen. It's against rust. It prevents rusting of the cell. Oxygen, you know how oxygen rusts a car? Yeah, so ascorbic acid prevents this from oxidizing or rusting, if you will, or aging. So it's just the, outer, the protective layer. Does that make sense? Okay, now our government tells us that ascorbic acid is vitamin C, but it's not. Okay, that's a completely misunderstood concept, and it's, I, I, I want to call it fraud. And everybody's been duped. I went to a seminar back in the late 90s, and this cardiologist, is, he's a great man, he's in Toledo, and he was saying that um, <clears throat> vitamin C repairs arteries and reverses heart disease. And I was attending his seminar, and I was like, wow, that's really cool. I'm new in practice. I just learned something very valuable. For the next 11 years, I, didn't, I never saw it work. I saw heart disease patients taking vitamin C, and they still had heart disease. And I, you know, and I, so ascorbic acid just doesn't work. Now, it's an acid, so when somebody has a cold, they'll take ascorbic acid, their body becomes more acidic, and the pH change kills the virus. Okay, that's what ascorbic acid is valuable for. It's, for, it's just uh, short term. It's a chemical. It's not a food. Okay, I'm going to move forward. Here's the example of the car with the antioxidant protective coating around it. Now, if I gave you a bucket of paint I said, and I said, drive this to the grocery store to buy something, you'd be like, well, this, is, this doesn't work. This is a bucket of paint. Well, the government says it does work. The ascorbic acid does work, but it doesn't. It's all this, all this stuff going on inside the uh, whole food vitamin C. All right, so we're looking at synthetic vitamin C. It's simply this molecule, ascorbic acid. Now, this author or illustrator has it correct. He, he or she labeled it correctly. This person labeled it incorrectly, and they call it vitamin C molecule. This is straight out of a, off, the, off of a website. So this person is confused because the government says that this is vitamin C, but it's not. Okay, you get, the, you get this idea now? There's real vitamin C that heals up arteries and other tissue. Then there's ascorbic acid. So you can look at a label on a vitamin, comp uh, vitamin uh, bottle. It says one chewable tablet. Vitamin C, and then in, notice in parentheses, as ascorbic acid and sodium ascorbate. Anytime you see that ascorb, that's, that's, the, uh, that's just the chemical. 500 milligrams, meaningless, completely meaningless. Okay? Notice too, this, the f next ingredient, sugar. Yeah, fructose. <clears throat> Here's another one. 1,000 milligrams, it doesn't even say as ascorbic acid or as a score, you know, whatever, as score of something. It doesn't even say it here. 1,000 milligrams and this percent of daily value. Again, this is just synthetic vitamin C, and it doesn't do what it's really supposed to do. All right, again, just as a recap, here's whole food vitamin C. It's got ascorbic acid, this quantity, and this is called rutin, bioflavonoids, P, J, and there's actually the P factors, 
and all that stuff. So it's a big complex with lots of stuff in it. Okay, so the bottom line is if the arteries are healthy, if the arteries are healthy, placking doesn't occur. So I'm going to like illustrate this. Here you have, um, here you have the artery and uh, blood's rushing this way and you got these little micro tears in the, in the artery. You take in whole food vitamin C and it heals up the artery. Whole food vitamin C acts like glue to keep the tissues together. Okay, now there's no cracks in the artery and the blood just flows right by. Did I lose anybody yet? Everybody's got me? It's so simple. It's actually very, very simple and easy. <clears throat> okay. So the question here is, how, does, how do we get vitamin C to enter into the cells so that the C can repair the cells? Okay, imagine this is a cell, and there's these portals, if you will, and there's different shapes, and you have uh, vitamin C entering into the cell through one of these, and it has to match up exactly with that portal. Got it? Mm -hmm. Easy. Okay? It took me uh, 11 years to figure this out, by the way. <laughs> And they don't teach it anywhere. It's not taught anywhere. I did figure this out. All right. Here's the kicker. Sugar enters the cells in the same way as vitamin C does. Got that? So imagine like here's this is the way vitamin C enters. Sugar enters in the same way. Okay, now follow me on this one. In the presence of sugar, vitamin C never enters into the, the cell to heal it. Sugar always wins. So sugar and vitamin C are trying to get into the cell at the same time. Sugar always wins. Yeah. Um, if it's like this orange juice, would you be getting, it would have to be a whole orange juice or, you know, if there's sugar added, it wouldn't, you know. It wouldn't the question is how much sugar is in the orange juice and how much, you know, that sugar is preventing the vitamin C from getting into the cells. So notice that pir pirates, sailors, they didn't drink orange juice. They ate limes. The point is, fruit juice has as much sugar as pop does. So it could be just as bad. And so if you have heart disease or you got clogged arteries, don't, eat, don't drink any fruit juice. You got to stay away from sugar and keep the quantity of sugar really low. Even if it comes from an orange. Yeah, even if it comes from an orange. Yeah, because yeah, the quantity is just so high. You're asking about the quality of the sugar. The quality of sugar from an orange is way better than the quality of sugar from a cookie. But the quantity is still very, very high. Yeah, see, because I was eating oranges thinking that I was getting the vitamin C I needed because I was eating a, you know, a whole fruit or whatever. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, eating oranges is good. That's good. But, um, but you got to look at the total amount of sugar throughout the day. Yeah, let me go forward here. And, uh, and keep this in mind. So now with the standard American diet with some... Cereal in the morning, low-fat milk, which is basically sugar in the morning, orange juice, toast in the morning. That's all carbs and sugar. And then you got lunch. Most people have uh, two servings of fries a week in this country. So there's going to be fries in there, pop, and then dinner, spaghetti, bread. It's just all high carb. Americans eat between 300 and 500 grams of carbs a day, and it really should be 125 or less. So we're eating extreme amounts of of carbohydrates. So, you know, that's why we have incredible amounts of heart disease, diabetes, and then cancer is fed by sugar. Okay? So when you reduce the carbohydrate down, the, the grams of carbs per day, then there's less sugar in the blood, and now the vitamin C can enter into the cells to repair them, and now arteries can be repaired. So I hear all the time heart disease patients come back from their MD saying, uh, I need to do low-fat diet. <laughs> wrong! That is wrong. That is not the way you, de you deal with this. And they go on turkey and chicken. And, and they miss their filet and they miss their cheeseburger without the bun. I put people on adequate amounts of fat, adequate amounts of protein, and reduce the carbs. And this has been known for 200 years, by the way. And even the AMA used to promote this from 1800 through 1940-something. The AMA knew it, but then that information got convoluted. So that's the deal. That's how you repair arteries. So let's get into that. Number one, how to reverse heart disease. Step one, no sugar. It's just that now we've done this for, oh boy, hundreds, maybe a thousand patients in this office over the last four years. And we've seen the results. And so this chest pain goes away, 
the, uh, the fatigue goes away, the heaviness. A lot of times left shoulder pain is related to the heart and the aorta and the arteries that go back into the heart. So even a little tiny spot of pain right here, we've fixed that because we've addressed the heart. Okay, we um, I'm going to keep going here. So no sugar, no foods that act like sugar. White bread, white pasta, white rice, any kind of white flour product. Not only does this have no nutrition, but it's high in carbs. Plus they add in bromine, which is a flame retardant, and it's extremely poisonous. And there's only one um, national brand that has no bromine in it. That's Pepperidge Farms. And there's one local brand that has no bromine in it, Zingerman's. Like 75% of Zingerman's bread has no bromine in it. It has to say unbromated in the ingredients. Okay, then number two, step two, take real vitamin C. Our favorite company is Standard Process. They have Cataplex C, and then another one called Ceruta Plus, and another one called Ceruta. Back in 1950-something, when this one was introduced, Dr. Royal Lee, who made this, said this is like Rotorooter for the arteries. And it is. And I've used it over and over again to open up arteries. And we have this machine. Oh, can you pull that machine out here? It's called the um, DPA test. DPA stands for digital, which is finger, digital pulse wave analyzer. So when the heart beats and the blood comes pumping through these arteries, the arteries go like this, and there's a red light that shines. I need to even move oh, that chair and stuff. And this, this machine shines this red light into the fingers, and then the arteries pulse like this, and it bounces the light back into the machine. And based on that, you can find seven things about the heart and arteries. It gives you an age for your arteries. It finds out how occluded your arteries are. All right, so this is the machine right here like that. And, um, and this goes on your finger. It takes one minute and it just goes, it just gets clamped on your finger. Now this is incredible. It's FDA approved. It sells really well in Europe. Hospitals here won't buy it because it's too cheap. It costs 10 grand. It'll, it'll replace, I swear, I'm not kidding. It replaces about $5,000 worth of testing at the hospital. We charge 45 bucks for it.